as you know, a lot of the a lot of religious traditions hold that you know, like in India, you know, that people could levitate and fly through the air. There's the miracles that Jesus supposedly did, and so on. Um, is that all real? I mean, did did if you're in perfect alignment, can you fly unassisted? You know, uh, can you do these ex- these these miracles and so on that Jesus supposedly did? Is that possible? Let's start with the the healings that Jesus did. Jesus and others. So you're sitting there dripping your illness. It's apparent to most people who see you. It's been in your body for a long time, and your family certainly can validate it. Jesus, or someone like Jesus, who knows how to focus upon the wholeness of who you are, someone who understands that there's a vibrational escrow and that the larger part of you is different from the temporary manifested part of you. So as we've been telling you that your source sees what you are in vibrational escrow, that's what this healer called Jesus was doing. He saw you as you now wanted to be, not even as you were before you got sick, as you are now that you've been sick and you want wellness in a more emphatic way. So he focuses upon your wellness and knows it so fully because of the power of his own mind. That as he beholds you, he sees you only as you want to be. Not as you are, only as you want to be. And his power of influence is so powerful then because in seeing you in your vibrational escrow form, he is in aligned with the source that is there also. And in that power of influence, your illness cannot abide in his vibration. Not right now anyway. And then he says it is your faith that makes you whole. Or he says, go forth and tell no one. In other words, he's trying to explain that what happened is an anomaly in humandom because humans are usually beating the drum of the illness. And he is trying to teach that you cannot beat the drum of the illness and embrace the wellness at the same time. They're two very different vibrations. And so a lot of healing takes place. You have healings every night when you go to bed and you're moving toward the verge of some sickness. And while you slumber, you withdraw your consciousness and release the resistance and the cells of your body take over the alignment. And when you wake up, you're not sick, even though you're on your way to being sick because you had your own, not miraculous, but normal healing healing in the night you see wellness is the order of business it occurred to me while i was the other night while i was reading um your book that the the so-called placebo effect you know in in scientific trials there's always a number of people they take the sugar pill but they get better and um it occurred to me that that your explanation or the vibrational explanation could could actually explain that Oh, and the placebo effect, if the doctor that is presenting you with the placebo doesn't know it's a placebo, then it really works. Because in in his belief of what he's administering, he conveys to you that belief, and then he influences your expectation into alignment with your desire. Mm-hmm. But if you go to a doctor who treated your mother who died of the same thing you've got, you don't have much confidence in him, do you? Or if you've got one of those incurable things, you know, one of those things that no one can cure. There aren't any of those, but there are a lot of those that you've given labels to, and there are billions of people who are focused in opposition to what they want. Let's talk about the out-of-body experience for a moment. Many people have them, yes? Yes. And Esther recalls that in all of her out-of-body experiences, she is from her flight calling down to those, look at me, I'm flying, look at me, I'm flying, look at me, I'm flying. In other words, that's the most remarkable thing about it. Look at me, I'm flying, look at me, I'm flying, look at me, I'm flying. And then, and then when you stop thinking about what anybody else is thinking about your flying, then you can just get on with flying, you see. And we want you to understand that when you accept yourself as this non-physical energy that is really you, then you free yourself of many of the restrictions that you apply to the idea of being physical. This physical realm that is such incredible reality around which all of your science has been born to try to describe it and articulate it and define it and explain it. All of that 
everything that you see in this physical environment is but an interpretation of vibration through your physical senses. What you dream in your dreamscape that no one's trying to scientifically prove. In other words, you don't take scientists to test the reality or the levity of gravity in your dreams. And yet, you want to do it in your wake state. And it is so interesting to us that this reality that we don't even want to call it real. We just want to call it thought that has been thought upon long enough that it forms a consistent enough basis that you have a sort of common ground that you are walking on. But you are a vibrational being having this experience. And as you meditate and work to close the gap and reach for the thoughts that harmonize with the dreams that you have been dreaming, you will free yourself of every limitation that your physical environment has given you. While you will maintain all of the advantages from the platform from which you have launched your desires, what we're trying to find kind and delicate but accurate words to give you is that this reality that you all are so sure is so real is but vibrational interpretation too. So you have a dream that you're all dreaming together where you have gravity and we think that's great. <laughs> but you are non-physical energy and you can fly free of gravity anytime you want. Not in the physical body, in the platform through which you are interpreting this time-space reality. And as we have a discussion like this, the majority of the world leaves us as we <laughs> move on with it because it's and and we don't we're not wanting at all to separate you from this reality because this reality with all of its gravity and real stuff is the leading edge of this thought in other words you've come into this you see a thought is a thought and when you think it long enough the thought begins to take form and as the thought begins to take form you may have heard us say that when someone focuses upon something and maintains that for very few seconds only 17 then another thought that is like it joins it and then in another 17 seconds another thought joins it until there is a coalescing of thoughts and as more and more thoughts begin to join that thought they begin to take on form that are then visible to others provided they are in a similar vibrational wavelength. So there is thought and then thought form and then eventually physical manifestation. And of course, we've really simplified that scenario, but that's the <laughs> genesis of it. And so then as you standing in the midst of all of this in your physical reality are now projecting thought about what has been before, you're adding to it and adding to it and adding to it also. Now, it will help you if you will see this physical, re physical reality in its evolution. And at the same time that you're acknowledging it through your physical senses, if you will explore it and feel yourself asking for yet more from it, maybe more than anyone has ever asked from it before. And in truth... This conversation has never been before in all of the universe, not quite like this. You and what you know and what you're reaching for and the things that you've pondered and Abraham and what we know and what we're reaching for and what we've pondered. This conversation has never been before and together we have just added to that which is. In other words, the universe has just expanded into something that is more. Does that mean that everyone can see where we've just gone? No, actually few can go where we've just gone. But the fact that we've gone there means that we've prepaved it and now it will be easier for the next one to go there and the next one to go there and the next one to go there. And if enough go there, then there will be a reality that one day everyone will be sitting around and saying, well, everyone knows that's true. <laughs> and we say, but at one time, it was just a new idea. A new idea that Source agreed with and got behind, you see. This is an expanding universe. It is not a shrinking universe. And every particle of expansion is an improvement. Every bit of it is an improvement because when you know what you don't want, you know what you do want. And in that synthesizing, in that deciphering, in that concluding, source is always moving toward that which is your desire because your desire is seen as valid. It's seen as 
You being on the leading edge, being the best one to make that decision and source goes with it, you see. But it takes a long time for enough leading edge people, and we're talking about the humans on planet Earth, it takes a long time, generations sometimes, for enough of you to begin even asking those kinds of questions that you begin going with that flow until you actually begin creating that reality. But that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing because it makes your platform stable, you see. If everyone who had a thought went off and got wings and went off and got a long pointy tongue and went off and got, and was flying around, if, if everyone who had a thought, we, we talk about this buffer of time, how lovely this buffer of time is because it gives you a platform of stability from which you launch your next creations. And so there is this buffer of time between the launching of a thought and the manifestation of it. And that is all so very good. But getting back to your original Wonderful question. There are no limitations. If this time-space reality has the stuff within it to inspire the desire, it has the means within it to fulfill the desire. No exceptions. When you come into full alignment with that broader part of you, now you're a vibrational match to everything that you've put in vibrational escrow. So now there's nothing standing between you and all that you've been asking for. And so now it can flow to you. In other words, that's the state of allowing. Step one says ask. You're doing that all the time. Step two says the source part of you will become what you're asking for. And step three says, when you come into alignment with it, now you are it also. So it must show up in your experience. It is a law. The biggest advantage of sleep is that when you sleep, you withdraw your consciousness from here. So it gives you a sort of reprieve from resistant thought. When you... when. We talked earlier about how you are source energy and you are one stream. And when you worry, you split your vibration. And when you meditate, you're offering only one again. Because when you meditate, you stop thought. And when you stop thought, you stop resistance. And when you stop resistance, you close the gap. So the primary value of slumber is that it distracts you from the resistance that you've picked up along your physical trail. It gives your physical apparatus an opportunity to achieve the alignment. Your cells are asking for energy and alignment all day, every day. But when you are really worried about something, you block that signal. Blocking is too strong of a word, but you hinder that signal. When you slumber, you don't hinder the signal. So what we say is, if you are someone who is, by virtue of the direction of your thoughts, tuned in, tapped in, turned on. If you are non-resistant by virtue of the direction of your thought. In other words, your body is at rest, but your vibration is not at rest because you could sit here and be bored or you could sit here and be worried. We mean that when you offer no resistance, then you, when you offer no resistance, which is what being in alignment is, then you are in vibrational alignment with your desire and then your desire is. Anything that you want and believe, like there are people who have lost a limb who would like to have it back but don't believe that they can and so they don't. But if you really wanted it and you were able to turn your thought into the vibration of belief until you not only believed it but knew it was possible so there was no resistance in your vibration, then you would be the first to do it and others then would not have as difficult time believing it. There are many things that you live today that you take for granted, that just seem absolutely natural, that at one time seemed absurd, and only the furthest, most reaching, farthest reaching, forward-thinking people were, would even dare to see, think such a thought. There are things that you think commonly today that your forefathers were jailed for having the audacity to even tiptoe into that arena, and yet now you know it to be, you see.